We're going to get uh, everything going here on a very, very exciting day for the Houston Dynamo. First off, a welcome to the Ramos family and all the staff that are here. Uh, welcome to Houston. I think you're going to end up loving this city uh, like all of us do. Um, there should be some video that's going to roll here shortly. Uh, my name's Glenn Davis. I'm the commentator for the Houston Dynamo. Also have a radio show, show here locally called Soccer Matters on ESPN 97.5 because it does matter to everybody uh, that is in this room. Um, so we have Tab Ramos here today. We have um, his family with us. And we're going to kick things off. We have also John Walker over here, the president of the Houston Dynamo. You see him over there, Tab, and then Matt Jordan, the Houston Dynamo general manager. So we'll kick things off here. John, can we bring you up? Let's uh, have a round of applause for John Walker, please. So just a little bit from my perspective about Tab Ramos, uh, first of all, in, in my opinion, one of the most technically gifted soccer players, if not the, that the United States has, has ever produced. Um, the other thing I think uh, that certainly needs to be mentioned here is the amount of work he's done at all levels of, of youth soccer to get into the position where he is today. Um, you know, we all know him from playing in World Cups. Um, we all know his representation of the United States. Uh, we also know that we now have more people from New Jersey here in Houston, so that's a good thing. So we're glad about that. The numbers are rising. The Jerseyans are making their way down here. Um, but, um, you know, his work with the under-20 national team, I think we're all pretty clear about uh, the career, the path he's taken, and uh, the fact that he's gotten to the point he is now where he's going to become a major league soccer coach here, and, and we're fortunate to have that happen right here in Houston. So with that, let me bring up John Walker, the Dynamo president. Thanks, Glenn. Uh, welcome, everybody, to BBVA Stadium and to the Audi Sports Club. This is an extremely exciting day for all of us here uh, with the Houston Dynamo. Uh, before we start, I'd like to recognize some folks here in the room uh, directly. Uh, Jake Silverstein and his wife, Megan, are here from Portland. Uh, Chris Hopkins from Brenner International and Ben Gwill, all of whom are members of our ownership group here. Uh, in the back, I see some legends, uh, Mr. Boswell, Bobby Boswell, Brian Ching, and Demarcus Beasley. Uh, I think Arturo Alvarez may be in the building as well, but welcome guys. Thanks for your continued support of the club and all the great things you did as players. Um, and in front of me, uh, Tab's family, welcome to Houston, um, Tracy, uh, Sarah, Kristen and Alex, thanks so much uh, for being here. It's an exciting day. Uh, this process for us was a uh, very thorough one. It, it took us uh, about eight weeks to narrow down what started to be as a, a field of about 70 candidates for this job, uh, some of whom were international, some of them from South America, Central America, within MLS, and of course through U.S. soccer as well. Uh, and through the process, what I can tell you is uh, we, it became very clear to us that we had found our guy. Uh, he exemplifies all the things that are great about this game and all the things that we aspire to be as a club, and uh, we're just really happy to have him. Dynamo General Manager, Matt Jordan. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, first of all, I'd also like to thank everyone for taking time out of your schedule for being with us here today. Gracias a todos por su tiempo hoy. Um, first of all, I'd like to welcome you, Tab, to the club and your family as well. Uh, this is a very exciting day for our organization, and, and I very much look forward to working with you. Uh, when you talk about Tab Ramos, aside from being an outstanding person and an exceptional player, what stands out for us as an organization is what Tab has accomplished as a coach. In particular, 
his unprecedented success with the U.S. national team programs over the last eight years. I personally have a tremendous amount of respect and admiration for how Tab has worked his way up the coaching ranks over the years, from working, as Glenn alluded to, from the youngest ages to coaching in World Cups at different levels. Tab's standout qualities are his competitive nature and his passion for teaching the game. These qualities, amongst many others, make him an ideal fit for our club and the Houston Dynamo. He has worked with and helped develop some of the most promising young players the United States has seen over the last decade. Any player you talk to will tell you that Tab is a player's coach. He's very straightforward. He's very clear with his expectations of what he likes from his teams both on and off the field. These are characteristics and qualities that we highly value as an organization. So we're so pleased to have you here, Tab. Uh, first of all, I just you know want to welcome you, and then officially, it's it's been a, a couple weeks now, and, and we've been working, but officially welcome you to the Houston Dynamo. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for the amazing introduction um, and, and the video, uh, um, all very nice. Uh, for me, um, I have to start by saying that I'm very, I'm very honored and fortunate uh, to be here representing the, the city of Houston moving forward and the people of Houston. This is a huge city um, that I think will have, uh, hopefully will have an even bigger impact on the soccer side in the country and I'm looking forward to uh, being one of the leaders um, as far as that's concerned. So I'm very excited to be here, uh, and I can't wait to get started. Let's give him a round of okay, uh, as we move it on here, before we open it up to media, on the back table, <laughs> there is, it's not Tabasco, it's Tabasco. <laughs> okay, so everybody's, uh, I've been told, Everybody can take one of these when they leave. So this is a wonderful touch. With that, I'm gonna bring up Edgar Valise and we're gonna to start to open things up to media. Edgar? Hey everyone. So a few housekeeping items. We're gonna start in English and then transition to Spanish. Please raise your hand and we'll work our way to make sure you get a microphone. Once you do get that microphone, please say your name in the outlet uh, and the question for the individual that you'd like to address. We'll start here with Glenn. Hey, uh, Glenn Hill, Houston Chronicle. Uh, Matt, I, I think we all know about Tab's resume, but what were some of the things that you heard in your conversations throughout that pursuit that really sold you on him uh, as your selection? Well, I think what, what stood out to us as a group in going through the, the coaching search process was how clear Tab was with his ideas. Uh, he's a meticulous planner. He's very organized. He, he's, he places a high value on creating a collaborative environment which is something that's very important to us as well. And he's very hardworking, you know, and, and I think that that's something, as you see, I mean, as I, as I talked about earlier, obviously he was an exceptional player, um, but he also put in a tremendous amount of work working his way up through the coaching ranks over the last decade, you know, and that speaks volumes to, to him as a coach and also as a person. So those are really the main things that really stood out to us. Tab back here, David Nuno, ABC here in Houston. Why was this the right opportunity for you and the right time? Um, I think there, there's there's really a number of reasons. Um, uh, first of all, it's the right time because I feel I felt very good about what what had been done, the work that I had done already at U.S. Soccer, and I felt like uh, it was time for a different challenge. Um, you know, in terms of this particular opportunity, there were a couple things right you know right offhand for me when I had when I had a meeting with the ownership group. Uh, and with Matt and with John, I, I really felt like there was uh, there was a synergy there, and I felt like we really hit it off in terms of wow, this is this is really for me a group that I that I want to that I, I want to move forward with. As as Matt mentioned before, um, I, I like to work in a very highly collaborative effort uh, in a team that's always involved in a team that always has an opinion, uh, and that's very important to me. And I felt like starting right there, I, I felt very good about that part of it. <clears throat> Then uh, there's some obvious reasons why I think this is perfect for me. You know, number one, obviously, the city of Houston I think has huge potential, uh, not just on the on the uh, you know in the national market on the English side, but also in the Latino market. 
Um, I had, you know, I had learned a lot more about Houston last year uh, when I worked for one of the TV networks uh, covering the World Cup uh, about the importance of Houston and the Latino community in particular. Uh, and so that attracted to me immediately. And then I think the most important piece, which is um, I think we have good players here. I think we have players who fit um, what I want to do and how we want to play. Uh, so I felt like the core of this group is, is a great one to start to move forward with. Tom Dart, MLSsoccer.com. Tab, could you give us a, an idea of the kind of the blueprint you're going to be working with changes you're planning to implement? Uh, how, how are you going to bring these young players through? How quickly? How are you going to compete against uh, some of the bigger budget teams? Well, um, you know, I think it's too early at this point to speak about any names, you know, in terms of who's staying, who's going, what we're, you know, but um, I, I can tell you that, you know, as Matt mentioned before, I'm very clear about the ideas I have moving, moving forward uh, in terms of the way we want to play, in terms of the style of play we want to have, and the type of uh, demeanor that we want our players to have. You know, we want that aggressive winning, aggressive, not dirty, obviously, but just an aggressive demeanor in terms of winning. Everything that we do, the moment we step on the field for training is about winning. You know, and whether that's a small 1v1 exercise or a 4v4, I want the players to know that, that that's who we are. Um, and then as far as, you know, making changes and what the team will look like as we go into the season, you know, it, it, there, was a, there was a great coach, his name was Xavier Escargorta, and I think many of you who have been in the sport for a long time, uh, you know, probably know the name. He coached uh, Bolivia in the World Cup, coached Chile national team, coached Athletic Bilbao, Valencia, a bunch of teams in Spain. And one of the things he said to me is, when anybody, whenever anyone asks a question about soccer, um, you can you can always answer the question as it depends, uh, because it truly depends. Uh, so I know that I have some clear ideas. I also know there are some challenges in the league in terms of you know, uh, rules and regulations that you have to follow and players that you have and, you know, so there's a lot to cover still. I know I'm getting just my, my feet wet over the last couple of weeks. Uh, so there's a lot, a lot of work to do over the next month and a half to, to be able to answer your question properly. Uh, Victor Ariza, uh, Soccer Matters, Sports Map and Deporto Total USA. Uh, Matt, what type of uh, financial backing uh, will Tab Ramos have from the club? Uh, can fans expect a similar budget to last season, uh, more or less? Well, our ownership group is committed uh, to investing in the right players, as we've seen with, with players like Kiki Struna, Matias Vera, Mora Minotas. Uh, so really, you know, there's, there is that, that level of support. Um, for us, you know, that commitment also with our ownership group extends uh, beyond the product on the field with the additional resources that have been allocated towards our academy and staffing facilities and amongst many other uh, you know, improvements. So for us, you know, we're very appreciative of all the support we've gotten from our ownership group and, and we know that you know, it's going to be, you know, that support will continue and, and the right players will, will be right to invest in. Tab, David Nuno again here, ABC 13. Have you had a chance to take a look at what the Academy is doing and, and your thoughts on the development there? Yeah, I have actually. I, so I've met with uh, Academy Director Paul Holliker, and, I, and I've met uh, with all of the Academy coaches. We've, you know, Amit and I attended a training session already of, of the U19 team and, and the U17 team. So we're, we're very, we wanted to get very familiar with that right away because we know how important that is to the club, and we knew that, we knew that coming in. Um, I'm very excited about the fact that a lot of changes uh, have already been made here over the last 12 months or so in terms of having alliances throughout, uh, throughout the, the greater city of Houston. Uh, and so I think the club is already moving in the right direction. Hey, Tab. It's Jesus from the Bayou City. What do you see is the biggest challenge and maybe the first challenge that you will tackle to bring this team back to the playoffs or back to where it needs to be? Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I, I don't think it's anything in particular. Um, you know, I think that, that the challenge for us uh, to start with is just to implement the new way we want to play. Uh, I think it's a way that the players will be happy with. I think we have the type of players that will be happy playing the way we'd like to play. <clears throat> but certainly we'll run into some challenges on the way. Um, I'm, you know, I'm very excited about moving forward and about starting that work. You know, the difficult part is that, you know, I'm being named coach at a time when the team's not around. So I, you know, I wish the team was around already so I could get going. But, um, but yeah, it takes a little bit of time. But at, at, at this moment, I, I'm not concerned about anything other than just, you know, once we get the group together, getting them going in the right direction. Tabare, aquí de este lado. 
la Secretaría de Univisión. Eh, pregunta para ti, ¿esta es tu primera oportunidad como técnico a nivel de equipo? Eh, has estado como asistente en la selección de los Estados Unidos en divisiones menores con la selección también. Eh, ¿Qué representa para ti esta oportunidad a nivel profesional, una oportunidad de crecimiento número uno y número dos? ¿Qué tipo de identidad le quieres dar a este equipo una vez que comience a jugar el próximo mes de marzo? Sí, bueno, eh, creo que primero que todo para mí eh, es importantísimo y, y, y la verdad que me siento con, con un honor tremendo de poder representar a la, a la ciudad de Houston y a la gente de Houston. Eh, en cuanto a lo que es el equipo, eh, bueno, para mí el venir de una selección y vamos a decir el primer, el primer trabajo que tengo en cuanto a dirigir la MLS, el trabajo de todos los días con los jugadores, eh, para mí creo que es importantísimo y algo que la verdad que me pone muy contento porque la selección, la selección es difícil. La selección uno trae jugadores eh, de todas partes del mundo y tiene cuatro días para preparar un equipo y los jugadores vienen de todos diferentes sistemas y jugando con entrenadores diferentes. Entonces para mí eh, creo que estoy súper contento de tener la posibilidad de dirigir un equipo que tengo todos los días conmigo, ah, así todos podemos eh, irnos en la misma dirección. Sí, bueno, eh, creo que la gente que ha mirado un poquito las selecciones juveniles, en particular la, la sub-20 que hemos tenido, eh, es una selección que ha salido campeón las dos últimas veces en CONCACAF, eh, que ha llegado a cuartos de final en Mundial. Eh, creo que lo que demuestran la, los equipos míos es que son equipos atrevidos, equipos que no tienen miedo y equipos que siempre que hacen un gol quieren salir a buscar otro gol. Uh, esa es la actitud que quiero del equipo, que quiero de los jugadores y que creo que en este equipo en particular no va a llevar mucho tiempo de adquirir. Do we have any other questions in English? Um, John, how involved were you in, in this uh, hiring process and what does this hiring mean for the business side of things? Uh, I, was, I was extremely involved in, in that I helped usher the process along uh, and uh, Uh, you know, I'm responsible for the, the bottom line of the company financially, so you know, any kind of uh, decision like this that, that it impacts the bottom line and hopefully in a positive way is one that you know, I'm, I'm consulted on. Um, you know, but clearly, you know, Matt was in charge of the technical rigor uh, and, and the question and answers of all the candidates, and it was, it was important to us, I think, that uh, both You know, Tab and Matt see things very similarly with our current roster and the style of play and those kinds of things. I think from a business perspective, what's you know stood out to me um, was Tab's openness and willingness to con to be in the community and be very visible in the community. Um, he is uh, an, an ambassador for the game and he'll be an ambassador for our club. And you know, he also knows the importance of having the players out in the community, which is something I think we can improve on. Uh, so that was very important to me, and I think we'll, we'll pay dividends for the club. Tab, uh, <coughs> excuse me. You've been linked over the past year or so with a number of vacancies. What made this the right time to come to MLS, and what made the Dynamo the right club for you to, to join? Yeah, so, so that's, a, that's a tricky one because I, I've been linked with a lot of jobs over the last, you know, seven or eight years. Um, but in particular, the first six years that I was at U.S. Soccer, I wasn't really looking to go anywhere. I was really excited about the, what, we, what I was building there. Uh, as you know, I was a youth technical director, so I, I really had my hands on all the youth national teams. Uh, and I was very excited about the work I was doing, so I was not really looking to leave. It was just me really, you know, in the morning is getting up and, and putting up the MLS website and seeing that I'm a finalist for a certain job for which I had never spoken to anyone about. Uh, so that happened a lot. Uh, and then really over the last year and a half is when I started to think a little bit more about, hey, you know, maybe it's time to, time to make the jump. Um, I felt like a lot had already been accomplished at the youth national teams, and I felt like it was a new challenge. So I, I, I really felt like I, I wanted to be selective over the last 18 months uh, as far as where I wanted to go. But it, it, it all had to start um, at a place where I felt like the players matched what I, what I wanted to do to start with. And that's why I feel Houston was the right place for me. And is one of the appeals, you know, tapping into the diversity that you talked about earlier with the Latino population and the African-American population, you know, going beyond the match day and the results, but, you know, scouting and bringing young players through, how big an, uh, an appeal is that for you as part of this job in Houston specifically? Yeah, there's no question. I mean, Houston has amazing potential. I mean, you know, it's bigger than Uruguay. You know, Uruguay's world champion a couple times. 
so I think you know one of the things that that we have to do better as an organization is getting out there to the Latino community and bringing those players and making them feel comfortable. Same for the African American community. You know, if you look at the makeup of our youth national teams, who our best players are, and you take a picture of the team, you really see what America is about. Uh, and sometimes I feel like in the development academy, that's not always represented. Uh, and hopefully we can do a great job here to, to represent exactly that. Matt, I'm, I'm curious how much consideration you gave to in former interim coach Davey Arnault. How important was it for you personally to maybe bring in a fresh face? Well, listen, you know, we're, we're very appreciative of the hard work that, that Davey demonstrated. You know, he stepped in in a difficult moment uh, with nine games left when we made a coaching change. Um, and so, you know, he, he was a part of the process. Uh, but we felt that, you know, going through the whole process, that Tab was the right man for the job at, at the right moment for the club. And, and Davey's been offered a role on the soccer side of the club to continue with, with the organization. Um, but we're very appreciative of his hard work. Uh, but we're really excited about the future, and, and we're, we're so pleased to have Tab here. Uh, Matt, can you uh, shed some light on the future maybe of uh, Albert Elise, Mauro Manotas, two important players? Uh, where do they fall in this uh, plan with uh, Tab Ramos as head coach? Well, obviously, Moro and, and Albert are, are both players that, that we get a lot of interest in from around the world. Um, you know, we're in regular communication with, with both the players uh, directly and also their representatives, and, and it's an open dialogue about their future. Um, you know, so it's something that, you know, we're, we're going to continue to see how it evolves, you know, over the next short period of time. Um, but Again, they're obviously both players that we're very happy to have here, but we understand with their level of talent that there's a market for them outside the league as well. So it's, uh, it's something that, that we're continually evaluating. Matt. Uh, Philip Clark, uh, DSHN Honduras. Matt, what is the real situation with uh, Romel Kyoto with Houston Dynamo in this moment? Well, Romel Kyoto is currently under contract with the club. Uh, and we are in, again, regular communication with, with his representative and, and we're continuing to work through what it's going to look like for him moving forward for his future. And, you know, but today he's under contract with the club. Hey, Tab. Over here, on your left. Um, on, on your right, I oh. guess. <laughs> oh, okay. um, have you had a chance to speak to your you know, former coaches or you know, former teammates that have now become coach in MLS to try to get some idea about how it is to run a you know, club day to day? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I've done that all the time. Uh, you know, obviously, I have Pablo here with me who has the experience, who has already coached in MLS. Uh, but if you look at the sort of the history of the youth national teams, my assistant coaches have been, you know, Brian Bliss, who already coached, you know, at, at, at the Columbus Crew. He coached at the Chicago Fire. Uh, Kurt Analfo, who coached DC United. He coached Sporting KC. He coached the LA Galaxy. Um, uh, I can't think of other names. I, I, I always try to bring uh, the best people I could. Uh, and so I feel like I'm, I, I have always really been involved in everything that's happened in MLS and very familiar uh, with how it works. Now, obviously, <clears throat> in MLS, the rules change every year, so that's something that I got to get yes. the new book every year. But, uh, <laughs> but other than that, I'm, 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 I know I have a lot to learn because I think every coach does, and that's how this business works. Um, but I feel comfortable with where I am right now. Last question in English. Anyone else? Uh, one more for Matt. Um, you know, you mentioned things like players, coach, uh, youth development. Um, to describe uh, Tab, um, factors that have been described about previous coaches. What makes this hire different? Well, I think what what is really important about the hiring of Tab is that you know he he's worked at every level in this country. Uh, he's eager for this moment with this club. You know, that's, that's what's really important. I think, you know, when anytime you're going through a process like this, a lot of people, I mean, you know, I could go through a list, you know, and, and John alluded to this earlier of, you know, 80 candidates, right, that they, they want a job. But what really stood out about Tab is that he wants this job, this challenge, you know, to work in this city. And that's, that, that really resonated with us. Um, you know, the other thing that really resonated, he's got a really unique background. Uh, again, he understands the league you know, very well. 
Um, he grew up and in, in was, was born in Uruguay, but came to the country uh, at what age, 11? 11, 11 years 10. old. Um, you know, and so he's got a, a really good background, but I think really what stands out to us and to our ownership group is that, that he's really eager for this challenge with this club to work in this city. And that's something that was really important for us. Ahora sí, en español. Tabaré nuevamente. Eh, hablabas acerca de la importancia de la comunidad hispana, de llegarle a la comunidad hispana, de mantener ese nexo ¿no? que el equipo ha trabajado tanto para mantener. Eh, ¿Quieres mantener este mismo grupo de jugadores tan diverso que tiene el Dinamo hasta el momento o estás quizás buscando, y obviamente es muy temprano, ¿no? pero sumar nuevas piezas a esta organización para hacerlo quizás un poquito más reflectivo de lo que es la comunidad hispana en Houston? Sí, bueno, creo que como, como tú bien dices, en este momento es un poquito temprano para contestar la pregunta, ¿no? Eh, por supuesto que uno siempre quiere mejorar el equipo. Eh, hay que tener en cuenta los contratos de los jugadores, cuando acaban, cuando no, qué opciones hay. O sea, eso es todo el trabajo que estamos haciendo en este momento con Matt, eh, pero creo que se necesitan un par de semanas más. Todo depende. Todo depende. <risa> Chat. Señor Ramos, bueno, Leopoldo Mata, Radio Busem. Dentro de lo que sería el diversificar esa comunidad latina, por alguna razón el Houston Dynamo ha fallado en atraer a la gente mexicana. Yo sé que en su pasado él jugó con los Tigres y dentro de esa gente mexicana que vive aquí en esta área, hay muchos que siguen a los Tigres. No sé si por ahí dentro de sus estrategias para que aumente el número de gente asistiendo al estadio está usar ese pasado tigre para traer a los tigres y de una manera aquí pongan ese sello tan especial que ellos le ponen a los partidos. Bueno, la verdad que eh, tengo que decir que me identifico bastante con, con tigres eh, porque es una gran organización y un sitio donde creo que bueno viví muy bien, me trataron muy bien. Eh, ganamos una copa, o sea, muy contento con esa etapa de mi carrera. Eh, pero tengo que decir, aquí sí, por supuesto que me, me eh, quisiera traer un jugador de Tigres eh, y en particular un jugador mexicano. Eh, pero por encima de todo lo que quisiera traer es un buen jugador. Un jugador que hiciera el equipo mejor, porque sí, eh, la comunidad mexicana sería importantísimo que, que tuvieran un muy buen representante en el equipo. Pero creo que al aficionado lo que le gusta más que todo es ganar partidos. Entonces lo más importante es traer buenos jugadores. Bienvenido a Houston, Waldo de Telemundo. Eh, ¿Qué le convence de este equipo y el por qué quiso venir a, a, al Houston Dynamo y si ha tenido la oportunidad o algún acercamiento con algunos de los jugadores actualmente en la plantilla? Uh, lo, en principio lo que, lo que me ha gustado más es, es la técnica del grupo. Es un grupo muy técnico, un grupo con jugadores que les gusta tener la pelota, eh, que les gusta jugar hacia adelante. Eh, que son un poquito más atrevidos que el resto que muchos equipos en la liga y creo que para mí ese es un buen principio no hay una hay, hay una buena base una buena base para empezar profesor Tab Ramos eh, Philip Clark 10 HN nuevamente Honduras eh, qué comentario le merece los jugadores Alberelis eh, Bonet García y en este caso Romel Kioto que son los jugadores que aún tienen contrato en el equipo bueno, creo que los tres son grandísimos jugadores, eh, jugadores que a su manera los tres marcan la diferencia. Por, su, por supuesto, Boniek tiene creo que un, un motor que no se cansa nunca, eh, que es importantísimo siempre para un grupo. Elis con muchísima velocidad y, y bueno, y Romel que tiene muchísima fuerza. O sea que cada jugador creo que marca diferencia a, a su manera. Eh, felicidades, profe. Eh, Jerry Rivira, eh, 920 AM, informadores del deporte. Eh, nos hemos dado cuenta en sus alocuciones eh, previas y en sus equipos que eh, esa garra charrúa y esas ganas de ganar, sobre todo, le cambió la mentalidad del chip a las sub-20 en 10 años. ¿Cómo cambiarle la mentalidad a jugadores ya hechos, jugadores que tienen muchos años de experiencia y posiblemente han jugado internacionalmente? Bueno, a, lo, a los jugadores, a todos les gusta ganar, ¿no? Y creo que se pueden infectar de una de la actitud de otros compañeros. O sea, lo importante es, es eh, proveer eh, una situación en el equipo en la cual todos los jugadores quieren jugar a la misma manera para hacer lo mismo y para ganar partidos. Eh, creo que nunca, nunca he tenido la experiencia de estar en un equipo en donde todos quieren hacer su cosa y nadie quiere ganar. O sea, en todos los equipos todo el mundo quiere ganar. Lo, que, lo importante para el entrenador es siempre 
eh, tratar de convencer al grupo que todos los queremos, lo queremos hacer de una manera. Eh, para mí, por eso digo que este club en particular tiene una, una muy buena base de jugadores para creer en el fútbol alegre, el fútbol hacia adelante, el fútbol atrevido. Entonces esperemos que, que se pueda conseguir. Uh, this format, uh, uh, sources say that uh, Carlos Darwin Quintero was named to be here and that Houston Dynamo, some other players from South America. Do you have any insight? It's like anything, there's rumors that are floating around all the time. You know, we're, we're not really in a position to comment on, on rumors, but I can tell you that right now, you know, within the MLS, we're, we're having a lot of trade uh, discussions, ongoing trade discussions. We're, we, we have uh, our scouts out as well as we've been here getting everyone up and going. Uh, we've had our scouts out watching players as well. Um, and so we're, we're looking forward to the off season and, and, and we're eager to, to get to work. Algo más en español. Buenas, buenos, buenas tardes. Ángel Hernández para Brea Visión. Este, comentabas que ya habías mirado um, las, las academias. Has trabajado mucho con jóvenes. ¿Piensas que tal vez en un futuro tenga chance alguno de la academia subir al primer equipo? Eh, o sea, eso es lo que queremos todos. Eh, voy a hacer lo posible para que los jugadores de academia tengan toda la oportunidad de jugar en el primer equipo, eh, pero creo que las cosas no se, le, no se le pueden dar fácil a los jugadores, ¿no? cada cual tiene que ganarse una posición y tiene que ganar eh, la posibilidad de estar con el primer equipo. Las puertas del primer equipo siempre están abiertas a todos, así tenga 15 años, 14, 13, no importa, pero cada cual se tiene que ganar, ganar su posición, entonces vamos a mirar más a la actitud de los jugadores y si están preparados para, para ir al primer equipo. Eh, señor Ramos, ¿ha tenido usted la oportunidad de hablar con el señor Brenner? Y, y si por ahí el señor Brenner le dijo, mira, esta va a ser, o este es algo que yo deseo para este equipo. Sí, por supuesto, hemos tenido unas cuantas conversaciones. Eh, lo que le puedo decir es que lo, lo que él quiere es, es eh, o sea, ganar partidos, ¿no? que el equipo esté en playoff y que se haga lo mejor posible. O sea, esas son el tipo de conversaciones que hemos tenido. Ah, por supuesto que en los próximos meses eh, tendremos conversaciones más a, mucho más a fondo, ah, pero hasta el momento el, lo importante creo que ha sido que me ha sentido, él me ha hecho sentir muy bien en el club y querido en el club. Tap. Otra vez acá en la... Tap. <risa> I always I miss that one sí, every time. Sí. Uh, ¿Cuántas juntas o cuántas pláticas tomó para que tú dijiste este es el lugar en donde yo tengo que estar? O, o nos puedes decir ese momento que tú dijiste yo aquí quiero ser el entrenador. <coughs> en realidad hubo solo dos conversaciones para mí muy importantes. Una que hicimos por teléfono en cuanto estaba en, en la cual había... Uh, había algunos de los dueños estaban en la conversación, estaba Matt, estaba John en la conversación eh, y después cuando nos reunimos en persona eh, en Los Ángeles para mí fue el momento cuando regresé a casa y le comenté a mi familia que, que para mí este era el grupo de gente con la cual me, me gustaría trabajar. ¿Algo más? Las dos primeras preguntas que le hice eran bien facilitas. Antes de que usted fuera contratado por el Houston Dynamo, se escuchó fuertemente su nombre como uno de los candidatos para venir a dirigir la selección mayor de Estados Unidos. Eh, ¿Por allí hay algún tipo de, de decisión que usted toma al ver que eso no se da o dentro de lo que son sus sueños sus metas a corto alcance está todavía el llegar un día a ser el director técnico de la selección de Estados Unidos. Bueno, eh, sí, la pregunta es más difícil, están empezando a ser más difícil. Eh, en ese sentido lo que puedo decir es que eh, creo que en la selección juvenil estaba haciendo gran trabajo, eh, la federación en general no tuvo conversaciones conmigo en cuanto a discutir la, la selección grande, eh, eso para mí se me hizo un poquito difícil en su momento, pero eso hace dos años atrás. Eh, pero así de, vamos a decir, en los últimos meses, cuando en realidad 
empecé a enfocarme en lo que sería irme seguramente a MLS, eh, que fue en, en general después del Mundial de, de Polonia en junio, cuando decidí que sí, que, que era momento. Eh, para mí no marcó la diferencia, o sea, sabía que, el, que la selección mayor ya tiene entrenador, que seguramente ese, ese entrenador se va a quedar bastante tiempo y, y que para mí esa puerta creo que no, no, no estuvo abierta. Aquí, está. Bienvenido a Houston, Jorge Clara, Deporte Total USA. Gracias. Primera pregunta, en su equipo, ¿quién elige al capitán? ¿Usted y su cuerpo técnico o los jugadores? No, bueno, esa es una pregunta que creo que es bastante fácil porque el capitán, o sea, el equipo es de los jugadores. El entrenador hace lo posible para tener a los jugadores en un sistema en el cual cada posición, cada jugador puede estar en la mejor posición para él. Pero no cabe duda que los equipos que salen adelante es porque tienen, tienen esa garra que el equipo tiene, no la garra que le da el entrenador. O sea, el entrenador sí le, le, le puede dar soluciones, eh, pero el equipo, los equipos son siempre de los jugadores. Gracias, caballeros. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, we will take a few photos, so we'll be right back. We'll start with the jersey presentation. If anybody would like to do uh, scrums, we're going to go here to our right, and the three gentlemen will be available for about five or so minutes. Uh, the food will be ready soon, so thank you everyone for joining us, and uh, we'll see you guys here pretty soon. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.